All right, so you asked for it and I have built it. I asked my newsletter subscribers to the content by what's the next automation that they wanted me to build out and overwhelmingly they chose for a newsletter automation. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate your newsletter, about 95 to 99% of your newsletter, depending on what you need. And so that way you can stay consistent with your email marketing. If you're interested in these make automation blueprints for yourself, make sure that you subscribe to the channel here because I will put something down in the comments and the description down below once I have it fully built out later on this week. But I am going to share my blueprints with you guys somehow, some way. In the meantime, if you don't want the blueprints and you need help implementing something like this into your business, I'm also going to drop a link down below so you can book a discovery call with me so we can figure out what the best automations are for your business. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this newsletter automation. First off, I wanna show you what the flow looks like so it's not too complex, but I do wanna go ahead and tell you that we are starting out with AI table versus starting out with an RSS feed or something else. So let me take you to the AI table here so that way you can see exactly how to set things up for yourself for your own newsletter. What I have in the first column here is the topic. So the topic that you want your newsletter on, and I also have a column for subject line, newsletter copy. So that's actually where um, the copy is going to go that ChatGPT actually generates. And then I also have a call to action link. That can be whatever you want. You can have the link to your scheduler. You can have an affiliate link, whatever it is that you want to actually include in your newsletter. Then also you have the status. And within the status column, I have queue, in progress, draft, and posted. And I have this for a few different reasons. Number one, so it'll go one by one. Number two is that once I actually have the copy of what ChatGPT has written, I can actually come in here and change some things around if I like to. And then lastly, if I have posted it and I approve everything that's been going on here in the data sheet, after I post it, I can go into a second automation after this, meaning I can post this to my social media account, encourage people to sign up for my newsletter or whatnot, considering the fact that I've actually approved everything and posted it. That would take a second scenario. If you guys are interested in seeing what happens after a draft has been approved and posted, and how I take it from there to publish it to social media, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video for that. But let's go ahead and jump into the actual automation here itself. So I've showed you the records. That's what we're gonna have in AI table. Or if you wanna start it out with Airtable, Google Sheets, RSS feed, whatever you want, you can do. So if you have seen my last video on automating your blog, this looks fairly similar because it pretty much is. I reworked everything to make it fit for a newsletter. And so I'm gonna show you everything here. I've already shown you the table, but I'm gonna show you what this actually looks like on the module here. So it's actually pulling up the information that I have on that data sheet that I just showed you. And the first thing that you wanna do is you want to give it a command and filter it by the status, right? So I showed you my cue buttons and I showed you that it can change to in progress, posted, draft, whatever. And you wanna make sure that you have that filter set because if not, then this is just going to run through everything that you've written on your data sheet, okay? In one setting, one go, you don't want that, okay? So next thing is the iterator, and we use that record ID over here from our AI table data sheet. And then moving on, I have a little sleep in here, just a couple seconds. You can take that out if you want. I just put it in there because, you know, whatever. Three seconds sleep, so we're not just zooming through everything. 
Next thing is we're going to update a record in AI table. And so what I have here being updated is I want to actually see it go and be in progress. So we're changing from Q to in progress with this one here. Next, we are writing emails. So we want to create a subject line. And so I have very specific rules that I put down for ChatGPT. As I said earlier in another video, you can use whatever large language model you want. So ChatGPT, Claude, um, Gemini, whatever you want. So you can use that, but I've used ChatGPT here. So this is what I'm gonna show you here. So the prompt, is very detailed it's telling them that it's an expert copywriter and i'm telling them exactly what i want as far as my subject line i want it in eight words or less i do not like semicolons for some reason chat gpt and ai likes to put semicolons in titles and i absolutely hate it so i've written that i've only made sure that they have different outputs no explainer text because you know these models and chat gpt always likes to explain how they did something i don't really care and i also gave some examples of good examples and bad examples for the subject line so at the very end i make sure that i have the email subject and the email subject is going to be the topic that you have on your ai table record I also put down a second prompt for it as an assistant because I wanted these newsletters and I want these newsletters to be in my tone, meaning the way that I write, the way I speak. So I've added a prompt specifically for me. I created a chat GPT assistant and it's basically telling them or it, you know, act as Nicole. And I've changed my title to a seasoned email marketer, of course, that's not it, but um, it says, act as Nicole, a seasoned email marketing expert with friendly, direct, and slightly sassy tone. So it, it has me right there, right? So write a captivating subject line for my newsletter aimed at the content bite. The newsletter is about, and you wanna make sure that you have your topic. And I gave more iterations here of what I want my subject line to be concise, keep it short, avoid using the semicolons, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you can do this yourself. You can add in another message to ChatGPT so they can actually start picking up your tone for any of this content that you create, okay? So that's what I've done there. All right, so let's move on to the actual newsletter and the prompt that I've given it to actually write the newsletter. So, uh, generate a newsletter on this topic and that correlates with the topic in your AI table data sheet. And then here is the title of the newsletter. So you get this from the output from here as far as what the subject line is. And then we want to write an email newsletter of no more than 300 words on the topic of, once again, I give it the topic of the AI table data sheet, okay? Next is you wanna make sure that you give it specific instructions on how you want to write your email newsletter, you know, being an, exp an expert email copywriter and blah, 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 blah right? Next, we wanna make sure we have the formatting in place. So this isn't gonna be directly published on my email um, sending system. It's not gonna be directly published on ConvertKit. I am going to go through and make sure that I like everything and then I'm going to post it, but I still don't want to go through any weird formatting and having everything running together and stuff like that. I also added not to use or add asterisks in front of words because for some reason, ChatGPT likes doing that. I reiterated again that it should be about 300 words and do not repeat the subject line of the newsletter at the beginning of the email because the newsletters I was getting previously had that subject line repeated again, there was no point. And then do not use all caps in the email headings if at all possible. And next I am going down for the second message and I'm making sure that ChatGPT has my tone and my, 
you know, my personality kind of twisted in here for this message content. So once again, just like I did for the subject line, I made sure to give it information about myself and what to actually add in. Another thing is for the salutations at the end of your newsletters, I always have, you know, something down there and I wanted to make sure I didn't say the same thing because the first newsletters that I was generating, it just said, you know, generic something and then, um, quotation marks and then like your name like in the quotation marks it did not have my name nicole so you want to give it specific information here if you want it to add in a call to action to book a call you can write that in here like make the call to action to book a call with me for you know my agency or whatever it is you want to do that so i added to in the email with a salutation of one of the following so it will go through here and pick one of the following and so it will kind of regenerate so it's not always going to be the same thing and it actually has my name on here because that was kind of annoying actually having to write my own name in um where it just had the generic name okay so we're going to go on next and then we go on for the text parser because it's going to change that html from your subject line in your newsletter to text right and then now i have it going to updating a record in ai table meaning once all this has gone through once it's written my subject line in my newsletter it's actually going to update it in ai table versus just putting it on like a google sheets or a google doc right because it can be done that way, but I, I told you that we can set this up so we can have a second automation run after everything is published and approved, and that can go on your social media channels. And the only way that you can do that is by updating a record, okay? And then lastly, I have that repeater module on, and the bundle order position is coming from here for that flow control right here, the iterator. So we're only going to go one line at a time and it's not going to go through that entire data sheet in two seconds, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and show you exactly what's going to happen once it's ran. So I wanna go back up to the data sheet here and just let you see that I have 19, that I have 19 topics here and I have the call to action link, which is not gonna matter, but I have 19 topics and we're gonna focus on this number one here, building relationships through weekly newsletters. And going back here, I'm gonna show you this. I forgot to show you like what we're updating. So we're updating a lot here. So we're updating the subject line. We are putting in the newsletter copy we're changing the status from in progress to a draft, and we're also adding in the created at time. So the created at time is going to be when ChatGPT actually wrote the newsletter for me, right? So we go down here, we click on, um, actually it was right here. So created August 3rd, 2024. That's the last time I ran this, but we are going to see what it's going to do now. So let's go ahead and run this once I'm going to click on this and I'm going to take you back to the AI table as it's going. So let's go ahead and actually, I didn't even need to refresh that. Did you see that pop up from Q to in progress? And now we are at draft. So that means everything went through the way it should have gone through. And so now I'm going to show you exactly what the subject line it came up with and the copy it came up with. So the subject line for the topic of building relationships through weekly newsletters is boost connection with weekly newsletters today. Huh? Okay. See, this is why I wanna have checks and balances here. So maybe I might change that, I don't know. And then the newsletter copy, as I said, I mentioned in the prompt not to repeat that title or that subject line, but sometimes it does. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and expand this for you. So we can take a look at what it's done, right? So it's a pretty good length as far as the newsletter is concerned. 
And I've read through a couple of these as I was actually making all the drafts and everything and running it through. And it does really sound like me. It sounds really good. So what you need to do from here is you are going to change things around as much as you need to within your table here. And then if you needed to add in, so this is just a reference. This is not actually in here. So this is just a reference for you. If you need to add in your call to action link, if it's to an affiliate product, your own product or whatever it is. And then at this point, you're going to copy and paste this into your email service provider. I use ConvertKit. But I think this is a pretty awesome um, automation and this will save you tons of time. If you are interested in learning more about, you know, part two and how I'm going to spin this to get this to be a social media post, go ahead and drop that in the comments. If not, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, please share with others and I'll see you on the next video.